Last night was a long night. I sat through the entire Golden Globe ceremony. Every bit of it. But this morning I woke up to some Screen Actors Guild nominations and we're going to talk about the movie categories in this video because that's what I'm voting on for Critics' Choice. That's what I usually focus on this channel and I don't know what we're in for. But the landscape slightly changed last night. Is it going to change again? Because the Screen Actors Guild noms usually has one of the biggest influences on Oscar nominations of any of these award shows when it comes to acting. Nothing else, really. So if you guys are here and you like these videos, dropping that thumbs up will be the best way to support this channel. And I'll be back with my Critics' Choice Awards predictions, a reaction, and some Oscar nomination predictions for the first time in months. I'm excited. All right, first off, we have outstanding action performance by a stunt ensemble in a motion picture. How does this affect the Oscars? It doesn't, but I love looking at this stunt category, mostly because before last year, it was not a joke, but it was kind of baffling as to which movies got nominated over the movies that very clearly deserved it. When you have films like Mission Impossible and John Wick, and they don't get it, either they don't get the nomination or they don't win, I'm sitting here like, what? I believe it was John Wick that didn't get nominated one year. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you, what are you thinking? But this year, these nominees actually make sense. Avatar, there were stunts. The Batman, there were stunts. Wakanda Forever, obviously Top Gun. I think that's probably your leader right now because these stunts, uh, very different from being physical, but still stunts nonetheless. And The Woman King. I love those nominations. If I had one movie that probably should have made that list... RRR. You watch that film, you're like, this entire third act is a showcase of stunt work. And there are so many action scenes to where I am uh, kind of scratching my head once again why RRR did not get in. Maybe I would put it in over an Avatar. I think they were more impressive than Wakanda Forever. Regardless, this is actually a good five. So I'm happy this year. All right, outstanding performance by a female actor in a supporting role. Angela Bassett on the rise. She may be the favorite at this point. Hong Chow in The Whale. That's nice to see. Carrie Condon, Jamie Lee Curtis, Stephanie Hsu. Stephanie Hsu getting represented in the supporting category. So who, who are we missing here? Oh, Jesse Buckley and Claire Foy from Women Talking. Did they just decide not to include anyone from Women Talking in this category? That's tough. They definitely take a hit. Now, Stephanie Hsu, I'm still not entirely sure if she's as in as I want her to be, but this definitely keeps her alive. And Hong Chao, right? This could be the five at the Oscars, but I think it's a little bit less likely than maybe it seems because it's going to be hard to get two actors from everything, everywhere, all at once. And I'm still not entirely convinced Hong Chao is in there over some of these women talking, supporting actresses. So, But I do like seeing the representation and it keeps their dreams alive. I think Condon, Bassett, Maybe Jamie Lee Curtis, because she continues to get those nominations. They're still alive. Bassett's the front runner. I'm telling you right now. After the Globes win, Angela Bassett is your front runner for supporting actress. And that's really cool to see. All right, male supporting actor, Paul Dano, yes. Brennan Gleeson, yes. Barry Hugan, listen, I think he is almost firmly in at this point. I want to say almost. I don't want to guarantee that he's in. Uh, Kihi Kwan, Eddie Redmayne. Eddie Redmayne with the nom, guys, this could be our five. Because off the top of my head, I can't think of anyone else who is going to take one of these spots. I just feel like it's almost destiny at this point. And obviously, it's Ki Hee Kwan's award to lose. He'll probably win SAG. He won Golden Globe. And I think he's almost a guarantee for the Oscar at this point. But we could be looking at the five for Best Supporting Actor. And also, I know what you're thinking. Eddie Redmayne, why is he in here at this point? I could probably name personally five... 10 supporting performances that I liked more than Eddie Redmayne's. He was good, but it was really just one scene for Eddie Redmayne. So it does kind of feel like the year that Jared Leto was being talked about and is Redmayne actually going to make it for the Oscars? Maybe. Whoa. The first name I see is Ana de Armas. We got the Golden Globe. That was a little surprising. And she's been appearing in a lot of these nominations as of late. And she got the Sagnom. I am shocked. That she got the SAG nomination. Kate Blanchett, Viola Davis, Daniel Deadweiler, Michelle Yeoh. Where in the world is Michelle Williams? I, I can't believe Ana de Armas got in over Michelle Williams in this category. And it's been Viola Davis in, Viola Davis not in, Michelle Williams in, Ana de Armas. Lately, 
She's been in almost every single one. And you know what? It just clicked. Where Where is Margot Robbie? That's not a good sign. The lack of Babylon love, it just, it feels like, uh, feels like Nightmare Alley, right? It's that movie that'll make its way into some of these categories and possibly work its way into Best Picture, but the acting noms, I mean, Diego Calvo, what happened to him? I thought for sure he would get a nomination, and Robbie's performance is incredible. I've already said I think it's one of the best of her career. I didn't love Babylon, but I'm just saying, talking the performances... Ana de Armas in there is shocking. Viola Davis is a little shocking, especially when you look at Michelle Williams and Margot Robbie. Uh, is this going to be the five for Best Actress? I don't know if it's going to be. I still think Robbie and Williams, especially Michelle Williams, has a shot, but I do think Robbie's chances now are as low as they've ever been, and I'm a little worried she's not going to get a nomination. I, Ana de Armas in there, man. I'm still like, wow. No! No, Yes! Yes! Actor in a leading role! Austin Butler, Colin Farrell, Brendan Fraser, Bill Nye, Adam Sandler! Adam Sandler and Hustle! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh, that's awesome! D does, does this help? I, I am shocked right now. Does this help his Oscar chances? I don't know. I mean, obviously it does. It does, and he's been doing the sit-down interviews, and, and, and he's been in the limelight, right? He hasn't gotten a ton of nominations at this point, but he's been firmly in the limelight. See, now, now I'm pissed off that he didn't get the Golden Globes nom, because that would have almost cemented that for him. So, so who's the fifth spot going to? Tom Cruise. I think the Tom T Cruise talk is, is, is dying. I think the Tom Cruise talk is dying. I thought he was excellent in Top Gun Maverick. People want to talk about the dialogue and hit. No, I want to talk about the fact that he learned how to fly a freaking jet. How many actors are going to learn how to fly a jet and successfully do it for a movie? That's acting just as much as reading a script. Just as I don't care what you say. That's acting. So I do think he deserves to be in the conversation. But when you look at Adam Sandler in that fifth spot, that opens up new possibilities. And I'm not saying he's going to get that fifth spot. I still think someone like a Paul Mescal from After Sun, who is brilliant, by the way. That's one of my favorite movies of the year. I like that movie more than I liked Hustle. But to see Adam Sandler get some love, get some recognition, I am so happy. I am so happy. I loved his performance in Hustle. I love the commitment. I love that he loves basketball, and that went right into what he did in the movie. And just the idea of this kind of starting to make up for the lack of Uncut Jim's love. I mean, he got Uncut Jim's love, but he didn't get the Oscar nomination. Could he get it here? Chances are higher. I don't think he does, but chances are higher. Wow. Cast in a motion picture. The first one that stands out to me is Babylon because no Margot Robbie, no Diego Calva, no Brad Pitt, yet Babylon gets in for ensemble. I am a little baffled. I almost said babbled. Baffled. Banshees of Inishirin, that makes sense. The Fablemans, that makes sense. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Women talking. Again, no Claire Foy, no Jesse Buckley, yet it gets in for ensemble. So the, that sliver of hope that women talking needed and that sliver of hope that Babylon needed uh, when it comes to a Best Picture nomination, they're still alive. He's still alive. All right, this ensemble, uh, this cast nomination keeps their hopes alive for best picture. They have been resurrected from the dead. I declared them dead five minutes ago, and now they're back, baby. They're back. And here's the movies that missed. The Woman King. I think its chances now, shot. No chance it gets a best picture nomination. Uh, Glass Onion for Ensemble. I thought if it was going to get in anywhere, in any category, in any awards show, this would be it. I think its chances are shot. Elvis still has a good chance for a Best Picture nomination, but I thought it would get an ensemble. You look at that cast as a whole, obviously Butler, but someone like a Tom Hanks and really all of these supporting players in there. I thought that would be an over Babylon. So the fact that Babylon got in, the fact that Women Talking got in, their chances are still barely hanging on for dear life, and I'm kind of surprised that they're in there, especially Babylon. So where am I at after the SAG nominees and the Golden Globes last night? Uh, the movies that are on the rise, and not even on the rise, the movies that are firmly in that Best Picture conversation right now. Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, The Banshees of Inishirin, and The Fablemans. And the only one that I thought The Fablemans would get 
in this awards thing is Michelle Williams. I thought Michelle Williams would for sure get a nomination. That didn't happen, so took a tiny hit here. Uh, but Everything Everywhere and Banshees, I believe that's five for each. Regardless, oh my god, man. They are, they might be the two with Fableman's kind of creeping on the heels. The movies that really took a hit. Elvis, I think, took a slight hit. Top Gun Maverick took a massive hit. Women Talking took a hit, but now it's barely hanging on for dear life. I feel the same way about Babylon. Movies like Triangle of Sadness, I didn't see any Dolly De Leon. After Sun, I thought may make an appearance in here with Paul Mescal. Adam Sandler creeping on the heels of that top five. I still don't think he's going to be in the top five, but you know I love to see that. Stephanie Hsu and Hung Chow, they're still in the conversation at this point. I don't know if Curtis and Shu can both get a nomination, so that kind of has me worried. Ana de Armas, listen, her chances are stronger now than ever, than they have ever been. Can she do it? Can she overtake Williams? Can she overtake Robbie? I think she can overtake Robbie. Can she overtake Michelle Williams? I don't know, man. I don't know. Listen, this is a, this is a difficult... These are going to be the hardest Oscars I've ever had to predict. Not only because Best Picture now has to be at 10 movies, but because look at the madness. Look at the madness. After last night and today, we have to see what happens at Critics' Choice. Hey, I got to vote for Critics' Choice. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for sticking with me through all of this. This is a lot of fun. Come back. I'm going to be doing my uh, Critics' Choice Awards predictions and then talking about the ceremony itself. And I'm working on a video right now, my top movies of the decade so far. That's a fun one. Be sure to hit that notification bell and come back later.